shut up, you listen to my monkey mouth. As a companion, when you got pun on the canoe route, hopped in a portal and got in a fight. Elias knocked him out. Bow, Marco fighting style. Bow, you will see he tapped out. Bow, we win, we get crowned. Monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth. One. All right, welcome to SUYL. Got a special guest in the studio. Go ahead and give me your name. Hi, I'm Sarah Spear. All right, so I'm going to act like that was super organic and nothing happened, right? <laughs> so we were talking about the disease that is nostalgia. Yes. You rollerblade. I mean, you roller skate. Then I we roller were, skate. And then we were talking about how, you know, this, so the, rollerblading was all the thing in the 90s. I think everyone oh, had yeah, a pair I of roller. Oh, yeah, I 100% roller. rollerbladed. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, if you didn't rollerblade, you were, pretty, I think you were, like, the, the weirdest thing, like, jump roping. Jump roping became like uh, like the thing to do in the nineties. Yes, it was yes. either you were you. You went to the skate ring. Yeah, yeah. And rollerbladed. Yeah, and then you could see people on rollerblades jump roping, and they were trying to combine it for some reason. I could never combine it. That, that was just not seems too, too for me. I feel like I just it's just a chin break ready to ha- just eating nothing but. I'm very comfortable on roller skates now, and I still don't think I would try oh, jump that, ripping with my roller skates. That I mean, I think you could do it, though, because you get pretty good air. I think it's just the timing. You have to be like, can we start out off like at a four? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'd four. be like, one. <laughs> and then I'd have to reset. And then two. Yeah. But yeah, so we you know, so it's just like The Simpsons, all this like crazy stuff. Like the 90s was such a strange year of like economic growth uh small scale wars that we were actually gonna win <laughs> wow that's true i mean no like, no i know it's, it's so just the weird. way you put it like it was ridiculous they, they seem to have like a pretty good you know we, we i was talking about this with my family members and it was just like if it hadn't have been for him just like like just that tail end of it of his uh of his presidents so like Bill, Bill Clinton would have had like probably one of the best records. Really though, he had to go and blow it, didn't he? <laughs> not him though. Well, not him. Oh. <laughs> not, not him oh. in particularly. Oh no, I realized what I just said. <laughs> not him in particularly. I mean, it happened. I just realized what I said. <laughs> I think the real criminal in all of on the, in this entire thing, which was uh was uh was it Linda Tripp? <laughs> Linda Tripp. Oh, I think she was. Linda Tripp. She was probably, if not her, then uh, Al Gore's wife was probably like, but she was a monster of the '80s, I think, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. not so much the '90s. Not yeah, I don't. I don't because really... like I think that's when they started putting like, like, Tipper Gore, Al's wife was the one who put like the child, like. Doing like parental advisory. That's what she did. Oh, the parental. Oh, so that's right. The parental advisory. Yeah. Oh man. I hated that growing up. I had very strict parents, so the parental advisory, I'd have to... Are you a fan of that 70s show? I do like that 70s so show. So do you ever see the episode where Fez is, like, listening to, I think, I can't remember. It's in the Garden of Eda, so whoever sings that. Yeah. And he's listening to it, and the whole point of it is, is that Hyde's trying to corrupt him. And so he's got, like, super like super religious parents because he's a foreign exchange student. Mm-hmm. And so, like, one... Actually, you know what? This is so terrible. I just I just pulled a memory out. So you know what's going on with with Hyde, right? Right now. Wait, no. You don't know what's going on with Hyde. Yeah, the guy who plays Hyde. The, oh no. Yeah, so he's. I don't. So like he's he's like in seven lawsuits, six or maybe I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna exaggerate and say five. Okay. Sexual assault lawsuits, right? And I just pulled something out of the dark recesses of my de- that '70s show bank. Oh my bank. god, that's horrible! And there, in that, in that particular episode, he's forcing a vinyl record into no. another vinyl record. Oh god! Right, and at the time, you think it's funny, but now that I know he's literally involved in, it oh, makes it a whole lot worse. It's not a good luck. It, 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 not it's a like, good I got luck. sad. I was like in a happy place. I'm like, no, wait, hides a. Hyde's in like court right now. We, for... we don't like him anymore. <laughs> but not just that, though. I mean, I can separate the art from the artist. He's a kid. He's not even the same person, and you know that he is now. That he is now. Yeah. Or he's a much worse version of it, I guess. But yeah. You know. So well, thank you for enlightening me on a yet another <laughs> male's abuse of power <laughs> in society. <laughs> Oh yeah, so Kevin Spacey. Oh, I know Kevin Spacey's a piece of garbage. But on top, on top of that, three of his witnesses mysteriously died. 
accusers, not witnesses. I'm accusers, accusers. sorry, accusers. Is he like for real? Like, is he House of Cards? But like, yeah, in yeah. Real so life? like, I was telling him like they were talking about we were talking about trash humans on some some particular thing we had recorded in Something here. Never even got published. And then so like they were they were doing some they were joking around Kevin Spacey and or about someone else like kind of like being like the real like the real horrible one and I was like well no I was like look up Kevin Spacey and then we'll talk about like I actually didn't know about the the like accusers actually, yeah yeah they. Like, dying three of them three of them all three of them, all of them within two years of accusing him. yeah all three of them vanished within two years of accusing oh so it's like a vanishing thing too yeah. they're either they're either dead or missing all, all three yeah i'm gonna drink this really fast. <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad that that's what another thing that i was gonna ask so like you're me and you both really enjoy bourbon and whiskey, scotch. Well, yeah. your brother enjoys scotch. My brother is a bigger scotch fan So this than is I. a scotch. So if you're mm-hmm. thinking of a Christmas gift, Tomatin is one of the best, what I would say is affordable scotches. Okay. I'm going to have to yeah. get that in writing. Or, or like Glen Morangi 12-year. 12, 12 oh, yeah, you can go. Yeah, okay. you can take a picture of it. It's all good. Perfect. It's a uh, Glen Morangi 12-year is pretty good. Okay. And then like if you're looking for like a – I know he's probably not a beginner – but if you're looking for like a table scotch, that's probably something I would want for yeah. my place. Oh, I'm a, a table scot- scotch. I'm a beginner. Glen Morangi ten year. Okay. It's honeysuckle, low iodine, you know, no peat, and then cast it in sherry. Oh, but I like the peat. I don't mind. So the you don't mind the peat? Then I don't I would, mind it. At I would all, do yeah. like, like this. It's got a slight yeah. peated. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, anything that's gonna stay. I think like the peated ones. If you're not going too heavy. Mm-hmm. You want to stay away from like Artebeg and stuff like that. Those are the okay. ones that are like literally sucking on charcoal. Yeah. Have you have you seen the video of the guy getting dumped while he's drinking Artebeg? No. I showed Joshy here, and he's a total savage. He's literally sitting there, and he's like, "All right, we got Artebeg again. I'm gonna just rip the seal." And he rips the seal, and he goes, "Oh yeah, you get pine and tar." And then here comes this woman in the background. All right, I'm leaving. And he's like, "Okay." <laughs> bye and he goes right back to just oh, like no. explaining the art of it he's so savage with it and she's just like 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 you could like, tell i'm <laughs> out of your life now yeah. don't you have anything to say for this and, and he's like no i'm good i got art of bag like i'm, I'm chill right now but yeah i'm like that with my bourbon <laughs> like, i'm like that with my bourbon so just some of, yeah. just some poor person poor, in the background poor person trying to break yeah, up with me like, and I'm like listen all right babe bye <laughs> bye <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah, can, you know what? I don't have any ice though. So like, yeah, you, uh, could you fetch some on the way out? Man, but so the disease that's nostalgia. We love bourbon. You got to see the Zima, which also. I like I said, I haven't seen a Zima what since 1995. Yeah, 1995. It has to be right. I yeah. think it was, and everybody was drinking it. They put Jolly Ranchers in them. Oh my! Yeah, yeah they yeah. did. It yeah. was. It was a, th- I guess it can't like it. W- I can't be any worse than a white claw. A- I I'd like to think so. Right. I really would, but I do remember you know the first even the first things I drank in college were those horrible what Smirnoff ices. Oh man. And there is no way that's, I could stomach one of those right now. There that's is pretty no awful. Way. I mean, I was such a. I late- liked the like green apple one. That was my favorite. <laughs> I'm such a late drinker. So, like, I was, like, as much as you probably think that you're pretty square. Like, oh, I'm I, totally square. I hung out with, I so, like, I hung out with cops from, like. Oh, my God. Okay. Seventh, or, yeah, eighth grade all the way up until, like, 11th grade. So, you think I'm going to be, like, smoking pot or, like, I was a square. Like, that's, that's pretty bad. And then, like, some <laughs> things happened. I don't want to talk about it here. It's too depressing. It's fine. We already got depressed tonight. We can only yeah. talk about happy things now. Yeah, well, I don't really... Like, it's... Like, so, I was taking the piss out of this one person because I was an asshole when I was a kid because we all are. And so, she's there and she's trying to talk about the Austin Culinary Academy, which is a grift, by the way. I hope none of y'all guys got caught up in that. Oh, but, uh, like, yeah, I didn't know. Uh, but, so, she was talking about cooking and then, like, I was talking through the whole thing and she pointed me out specifically. It was like, okay... You think you know so much? Why don't you come up here? And then she's like, and she just like tore into me, like, and it was. I thought it was really funny, and the fact that she like didn't care, could talk back to me. I was like, tell me everything about cooking, and you know how do I become a part of this? And and I really got into cooking like the last two years of high school. Oh, cool. But yeah, so 
Um, I wish cooking was one of those things that I had ever gotten into. Are you, can you, can you like, do you have like I a can, dish? I can cook now. Okay. I've, I've learned. I lived with a uh, roommate that was really, really good. Well, like, I say was, she still is yeah. very, very good. I mean, she was, and then she cooked your last meal and, and we won't talk about that. We this. won't talk about it. No, she's still a very, very good cook. She's a very good baker. Like excellent. Yeah. Like her superpower is cooking, I swear. So she taught me a lot of things. So yeah, there's some things that I think I'm pretty that's, good at making, yeah. but I, that's the when when you were talking about civics yeah. on the ones who woke up and how they don't teach you any, uh, they don't teach you the right things. Yeah. Whether it's balancing a checkbook, doing your taxes properly, mm-hmm. I think that that's one of those things that as a man and a woman, you should be able to make yourself three decent three decent dishes that aren't going to be like a ramen. box of mac yeah, and cheese, exactly. Yeah. Like like just kind of and learn how to cook meat properly and learn mm-hmm. how to store it correctly. I think that that would probably be one of those that would go right up there with the one like, like now coding should be like a coding must. should be basic for yeah, everyone. Coding. Everybody I mean, should learn if we can't all be lucky and grow up in the MySpace page, MySpace era, know how to. Oh, like my MySpace HT. was so beautiful. Oh, I'm sure it was, it was rocking. So it was just beautiful. like had it had like music playing in the back. You'd hover over the links and they would blur. <laughs> I was proud of that one. I was really proud of that one. I just imagine your top eight just being like, just looking at your page and like, it's just so beautiful. I I <laughs> did spend a lot of my time just looking at my own my, <laughs> MySpace page because I was so proud of all the little hacks I had done to That's it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So we can't, I mean, that was, MySpace was such a strange time. The top eight. Do you eight. remember Friendster? See, though? yeah, I was. Because I was actually on Friendster I, before I, I was I never did MySpace. Friendster. Like, it took me forever to go to Facebook because, like, I was still convinced it was just for, like, people who were in college. Well, that's how it started. Yeah. That's when I got my yeah, invite. Yeah. I was one of the school, one of the first, not one of the first. I think I was in that second You were in the round. cat, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, and Friendster to me, I, I mean, I, I just never got into it. I never got into anything else but MySpace and Facebook. What about Live Journal? Live, oh, I actually did do Live Journal. Did you journal. do Live Journal? Oh, I did, and I got a reply on it, and it was super depressing. Oh, I'm so sorry. Like, it was, it's really funny now, but like, it was some relationship bullshit thing that I would like probably cringe reading now. Oh, I'm sure. And then I got like the most sweetest, su- sweetest reply, but it still felt so like dirty. Like, like afterwards, like, yeah, you were like, like, this doesn't I don't, matter. I don't wanna. Well, my parents found my live journal. Oh, that sounds like today. Anyways, I've since, <laughs> since deleted the, the live journal. I wish I hadn't, though. No, I, wish I, I bet you can, you can go in the archives, sure though, right? I you can, can go in the Wayback Machine I'm and find sure it. I'm sure I can find it. I just haven't. But, yeah, I remember when I found it, I was like, well, I'm just going to delete it then. <laughs> They also found it when I was very much an adult supporting myself, living on my own. Uh, and then they were so mad at me. And I was like, this was like 10 years ago. Like, yeah, I don't look, know why you're mad. Isn't there like a statute of limitation on you being mad at my live journal? <laughs> I, yeah. The, like, I, I'm I'm one to really say, man, <laughs> like you can totally like change. You are not who you were a day ago, a week ago, a month. Like, oh, definitely my God. not a decade ago. Yeah. I mean. When I think about it now, I'm single. I don't have kids. I, I'm an uncle. So, like, I feel like, you know. Yep, I'm an auntie. Yeah, I love a, being an auntie. It's the, like, being, a, being an uncle is the best when they, so, like, the oldest one doesn't like anyone but grandpa and barely grandma. Like, she's, like, he and loves. Barely gra- he How can lo- you not like your own he, no, no, grandma? No, no. That's horrible. He loves horrible. her. He loves her. He not like he likes grandma. He likes grandpa. You know what I mean? Got it, got it. Okay. So okay. he puts up with all of us, but Grandpa is the one, and he's the one that will, like, he's the one that you want to get that. Like, he's the he's the person not laughing in the crowd that you're like, I need to make that man laugh. Yes. Right. Yes. That that he's the one. I need to. He's. I need to get like, his he's affection. My project I need I'm to get my, my affection from this one because the little one loves everything, and the middle one wears his heart on his sleeve. But this one, and I, and he's like, "Thank you, Uncle Mikey. I really liked your Starbucks gift card. That floated me for like a week." Oh yeah. You know. Wow. So. Congratulations. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got on, one. On getting such a high compliment. Yeah. So what's like? So what's it like with you? Or that like? Because I love oh. the, the when you it's like since I'm not a father, like mm-hmm. seeing them develop their own independent thoughts, and because my sister gets to see it, but I get to see it sporadically. 
Same. You know, same. so it's my, like my my mom and my dad and my brother and sister in law and the kids they all live mm-hmm. in Raleigh, so I only see them North a couple, Carolina. Huh? Yeah, nice. I only see them a couple times a year, and every time I see them, they're just completely new people. It's, yeah, it's wild actually. It's scary, but it's also like you get to see their personality. Mm-hmm. All the art in here, with the exception of the Portal Boys, and the, is all my my nephews. And that one oh. actually isn't either. That one, but those two are the only but ones. But honestly, aren't. quite an artist. So, the, so the uh, my my niece is also my, the oldest. Well, because you're have. an artist, right? So you, I am an artist. Is it, yeah. I mean, on or I was. Uh, I, I mean, don't I really know that do. dad. Well, you're always an artist. I think like if you mm. can ho- if you can c- continue to kind of pick where you left off, you can. I mean, the artist artist probably never never extinguished. You can find art in anything. That's true. That's true. You know, so. Uh, when we were gonna, we were actually like not double booked, but I had someone before you. He actually did the mural here in Taylor. Oh, yeah, he was gonna I come in. That. Yeah, he was gonna come in and chat, but he had some car problems. So next mm-hmm. time when you come in here, maybe you'll get to actually see a piece from him because he told me he'd do like a little something for us. Oh, I love that. Do you do you see that like that creepy one back there? The like Spider Man. No, the one the... next to it. So do oh. you see that one? Oh yeah, no, I do you love know what that, that one. Is? I don't, but I love it. Do you, have you seen the Vich? No. You've never seen it? I have not. You know who Anna Taylor-Joy is? That sounds familiar. The what, Queen's where? Gambit. Yes. Okay, I so, was going to say I know that name, but I'm uh, trying to place it. Okay. So this was her, like, debut, like, one of her debut films. Apparently she turned down a Disney movie for it, which is really incredible. But um, it's called The Vich, and so it's it's a Scandinavian. So, area, yeah, oh, you know. I love a good creepy Scandinavian yeah, movie. Yeah, and so, like, they're out in, they're, they're out in the sticks, and there's this there's this uh sheep or you know uh that's talking to the kids and they named him black philip and that's the whole basis of the movie is you don't know whether black philip is really satan is he really talking to the kids and Uh it's just this and it builds intention and it has it has to do with like like you're kind of like what i would say is um a real kind of like like paranormal witch kind of stuff that's going on. Oh no, I'm here for it. I'm, yeah. I'm definitely going to go yeah, it's watch called, it now. It's it's called the Vich. The Vich. Okay. Yeah. And so that's Black Philip because they knew how much. Like I can't handle. I'm a Catholic boy. Oh, okay. So I can't handle like devilly stuff too much. Oh. It messes with me. Oh, and so, I like, love that. That's, my, so, that's, you're so that's, sweet. that's the that's the oldest one. That's the one I've, I've tried to get affection from. He's like he gave me that for Christmas. Have you seen? It kind of made me think of the ritual. The ritual. Have you seen that one? I don't think it's so. definitely a horror yeah. movie. But well, I don't want to spoil it if you do. See I don't it. mind spoilers. I oh, okay. like I ruined. A... Well, I don't want to spoil it if people haven't. Se- well, it's been out for a few years. Yeah. But th- basically, they get they get a year max. Yeah, you get you a get year to... max. Okay, so there's like a group of uh, friends that go camping mm-hmm. um, after a close friend passes away, and they're kind of doing it in honor of their friend. But can I guess what one this is? Is this yeah. the one when it's the uh, they can actually see some of the crimes that they had like done against their friends and stuff? Oh or? no! But I want to watch that okay, one. Okay, go ahead. that one Continue. sounds good. Yeah. No, this one is they end up taking a shortcut through the forest because one of the guys like twists his ankle and yeah. they're like, "We need to get there and we need to make sure this guy gets medical attention." Blah blah blah. So, anyways, as they're cutting through the forest, there's like this creature and then all of a sudden they like meet these people and it's all really really messed up but it's really really good yeah there was but it made me i saw that and i think i just like blurred yeah blurred the them. two together and was like oh that's kind of like the creature from the ritual so uh yeah. like there's i love i like i just got into like probably about two years ago i got into like looking up like just urban legend creatures or just like like um yeah. creatures that that people have like different cultures have built up oh like, you should look up the oh gosh am i gonna say it right the shinigami the shinigami uh is, like the japanese is, there's like a, a japanese folklore characters mm-hmm. and like folk- the like the one that uh there's like a bunch of them but i've seen like one that was literally like the grudge like it was yeah like the so grudge. there's there and they so they range from like yeah. good and friendly to mischievous to evil yeah. and bad and so there's so many different kinds but yeah i was gonna say if you're interested in kind of oh, like i would the definitely love something there's like that. so many i would highly recommend it edit i would love to um there i would love to see something like that there's this really great um guy who talks about he's on youtube and he talks he literally tells you the background story of every greek goddess and god so or he'll even talk about yeah. some of the some of the actual like I guess what I would say is like 
creatures. So like he talked about the, the the like literally the back the entire backstory of Medusa, which yeah. is really See, sad. Yeah, I, I would love that too. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, it's yeah. really heartbreaking, but it's 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 definitely it's definitely one of those like you don't you, if you only like know the the bare the bare like like the surface level stuff of like Medusa. Mm-hmm. I really would love for them to do like a movie or something to make her an actual character with development and like literally see something because it would be a hard watch but it would definitely be something interesting that i think could could really uh like reignite that kind of cool like learning about those those kind of like the lore yeah yeah Yeah. it would be cool to tie it together yeah i think they tried that with percy jackson but it just didn't take off like not as the not as the not as dark and depressing. It's not as dark. See, I love a, yeah. I love the darkness. I I started learning about this. I got a book by I think her name's Kylie Lee Baker, and she wrote like a two book series on basically this character that yeah is like meeting all of these creatures, and it's it's so dark and, and kind, delightful. Kind of, I kind of like what they did with Sandman. Oh, that was I really love Sandman. Really beautiful, right? Yeah, the Sandman's great. Like even Lucifer playing a part in it yeah. because like if you watch like if you ever. I didn't, I didn't, I had the Sandman comic, but I didn't know it Mm -hmm. because like I'd gotten gifted a bunch of comic books when one of my dad's personal, like one of my dad's associates was like, I think turning 30, 35, 30 something years Mm -hmm. old. And so he's like, all righty, monkey men and women. It's that time of year again. It's the holidays. And I know money's tight and everybody's expecting a bunch out of you. I've got an idea. And my friends at Gold Star Finance have an idea as well. You can take out a personal loan, build up your credit for next year so that you can actually swipe a credit card or have some money laying around for next year. And also, get your family taken care of the way they deserve to be taken care of this year. Now I know, you're probably thinking the last thing I need is some predatory loan. But the terms are agreeable. I wouldn't be pitching these guys to you if they were bad folks. We're from Texas. It's the good old boy state, and this is as good a good old boy connection as you can get. They're a literal family, monkey mouth family, right? Stop in, go to the website, use promo code MONKEY in all caps, or stop in and mention that your boy sent you by, sent you by and get treated like the family that you are. And again, you take out this loan, give you some cash up front so that you can get your family taken care of for the holidays, And then also build up your credit so that you can get going for next year better, right? Building for the future and getting taken care of in the short term. What isn't there? What isn't there to love? All you need is a driver's license, social security, a social security card, proof of income, proof of residence, and a uh, working cell phone number. And you can walk out with a check today. I know it sounds too good to be true, but it isn't. Like I said, get your family taken care of right now. Get yourself set up a better credit next year. There are friends at Gold Star Finance, Monkey Mouth approved. Hope you guys give them a visit. Thank you all so much. Now back to the podcast. And so he's like, okay, I got to like start giving away all my, my oh, stuff, right? Oh, no, yeah. I still have all my comments. I know. Well, this is a, this is a different, like, this a is a different time. time, you know? Yeah. And so he's like giving away all his, his, his guy stuff. And so I, just, I had like preacher. I love had, preacher yeah i had i'm love, 13 years old yeah reading preacher dude that's I, yeah. oh my god i had wanted which no one knew like they cluster fucked wanted yeah so horribly um i had uh the ones that was actually the the, the walking dead like i had a, mm-hmm. the first issue of walking dead I, I, uh, they're all gone now. I don't know what I did with them. They're oh, like, they're all gone. No. Yeah, I, like we moved a couple times. I gave just got I, like lost. Yeah, I gave my cousin the most important comic book ever written, which was I gave her Watchmen, and she was like maybe thirteen or okay. Four. That's like a pivotal piece. Yeah, she was like thirteen to, yeah. or fourteen at the time, and she started getting into comics, and I was like, mm-hmm. well, you can't read all those great comics without reading an incredible comic. Yeah. Like you have to read yes. it just for the, just, just for the inner, the interplay in it. And yeah. a comic book within a comic book. It's just so no, great. It's, a, it's definitely a good one to have read yeah. for sure. If you're that into comics. One, I remember and I was really obsessed with just like fat pig, dark horse, like comics that the people didn't want to read. It almost yeah. seemed like, because like, it was a little bit. It was a little bit more fun because the stories were a little bit like more mischievous, or they mm-hmm. were like a little bit more edgy, like not spawn level, but there was definitely like, 
I loved Wanted because it was when, you know, when, like, basically, how would they, I forget how that saying goes, but basically it's all of the, all of the, posi- like, all of the superheroes get killed. Like, the, the villains just, like, team mm-hmm. up. Every villain teams up and kills every superhero. Yeah. And then the, uh, the only thing that's left is now villains, and so there's, like, so then they, they like, create a, a, a shady government that keeps them in line and makes sure that they're only doing bad things to bad people or like and the, right. there's like a lathe involved there's mm-hmm. there's literally um early coding involved in it because i don't know if you ever seen how they can write code into like from a lathe they can write code in it no you know like with fabric you yeah. can write code into a fabric and that the doesn't way, surprise me yeah and the way that they would do it is it would be like it would be almost like a cardstock code you know so That's like so each each individual each individual um bump or crease that's that seems to be unintentional but is intentional counts to a zero and then a one and then that would be turned into an alphabet right and then that's how they would basically instill code to get things that shouldn't be said or people who shouldn't be talked about okay, i definitely got it i gotta get into this one yeah it's yeah. neat so if you okay. ever go like check out wanted like it's okay. a really great i feel like i've heard of it i just you i remember, haven't you remember when they were bending it. the bullets and mm-hmm. like throw the bullets around the person yeah that's that that's movie. That one? Yeah, that, okay. but it's from the. I was gonna combo. say, did they, they made a movie, right? They made a movie, yeah. Okay. Like okay. even Kingsman was a great was great. Like anything that I think it was a Mark Miller. Anything mm-hmm. that Mark Miller touches, is gonna be great. Like mm-hmm. Kickass was great. Wanted was great. Uh, he's got. I think he had a one. He had a Netflix. I didn't watch it. I like mm-hmm. the comic book a lot more. But it was essentially, it was essentially, um, what I would say is like a. Real, a more realistic side of like the the follies of being a superhero so like where it's where it's it seems a little bit more realistic because they actually put them in like situations that would be in their own kind of surroundings so they're not surrounded around like what you would say is average people so you could you can what show is that I don't. It was on Netflix, but I can't remember what oh, it was called. All of, my my brain immediately went to the boys, but I the think boys that's... is similar to it. But yeah. I, what I would say is where the boys go go to putting them in our day-to-day situation it's more okay. realistic because it's put in like there like it would be if like you got to see superman on krypton you know got just it. kind of okay. going through mm-hmm. what a superhero does you know so that's what makes it that's what makes like mark miller so great like mm-hmm. when he was talking about when he did like kingsman the comic books were really good and the movies were really good but it's anything that he attaches his name to throughout. Because I think Got like, it. Okay. if he doesn't, like, then you get, like, I don't think he did the third kick-ass. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't as good. Or if he didn't, he didn't have as much, like, control Sway in it. Sway over yeah. how it went. Because, like, the first one was a really, like, kind of scrappy, like, low-budget movie that just kind of took off because it just had a really interesting concept, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think, like, and Nicolas Cage was attached to it. I think that's what really brought people out. I mean, yeah. I will come out for a Nick Cage movie. <laughs> well, so we talked about nostalgia <laughs> being a disease. Um, we talked about the great, uh, the great refreshing Zima. Crystal Pepsi. Crystal Pepsi. Dunkar- what a time to be alive. Dunkaroos. We were talking about. How I, I will still eat a Dunkaroo. You'll still eat a Dunkaroo? I will 100% eat a Dunkaroo oh, still. Oh, man. I bought Arby's sauce the other day. Arby's is like 90s all the way, right? Oh, yeah. Like, Arby's is quintessential, like, 90s food. If White Castle is, like, the 90s of 90s food, I think water... I, I, like, a lot of people think that McDonald's was it, but it was just, like, Pepsi. It was all the underdogs. Mm-hmm. White Castle. I mean, they did have all, the whole Monopoly. Wasn't that when the Monopoly yeah. first oh, yeah. started? Well, I don't know. So, Remember like, are you a basketball fan? Beanie Babies. Oh wait, I, I, I meh. so meh. I wasn't. I'm not a basketball fan. Okay, I was a basketball fan. Oh, you're not anymore. So well, I just, I, I never got. It never, it never crossed over with me. I was a, a Michael Jordan fan, a Bulls fan. Oh, I mean, so who I, wasn't? So I think I ate like thirty Arch Deluxes. <laughs> Just to keep it, you know, gotta make sure that I get uh, it. Was an Arch Deluxe, and it's so stupid. Yeah, you know what it is? It's ketchup and Dijon mustard. That's all it is. That's it with bacon. They get you every time, <sighs> don't they? It was hilarious. Oh, I just remember there being Beanie Babies as the little oh my God. Happy Meal toys, yeah, and the Monopoly like the first time Monopoly came out. And I remember I collected 
so many things and all i ever got was like free fries which honestly wasn't terrible because i love McDonald's. Yeah. i still to this day love mcdonald's french fries so i would say mcdonald's french fries are still like probably the best out there so good but wendy's has really good fries wendy's fries over time have gotten very delicious yeah. as well wendy's is a, wendy's also has some good... talk about brought back their nacho fries <laughs> I'm such a fat boy for that. I love nacho so terrible, fries. So terrible. And it's just that worst chemical. Oh, my God. No, it, it cannot be good for you in any way. So my mom likes the McRib. <gasps> they're, then, they're on a farewell tour right now. It's so fake. I know, yeah. but, like, I it's love so, the idea that there's a farewell tour for this sandwich. So guess what I did? What did you do? I went out and I bought two things of ground pork and... If I'm right, because I've worked in a ton of restaurants. What's have you worked in a ton of restaurants? Uh, you... not as a cook, but as like a server. Yeah. Great, great, great. So, can you think off of the top of your head, what's the standard Cisco Labatt barbecue sauce? Oh God, I don't. So I've worked in a lot of kitchens, and the only one that I came to mind. I don't think we my... had barbecue sauce at the restaurants. Okay. I worked at. Like honestly, yeah. I, I worked in a lot of like cafes. Yeah. So it was like. I think the sandwiches only sandwiches without barbecue sauce. Yeah. Sorry, anyways. No, no, no. But yeah. the only thing that I can think of is bullseye. Bullseye. Yeah, because it because in every place that I worked had bullseye, and it came in like a, like a like a what is it an antifreeze? Like the jug. The jug. Yeah. The jug. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, so and that then like it would be like next to the <laughs> vat of mayonnaise. <laughs> That's exactly it. That you scoop out oh, with like an ice cream scooper, or like so a watermelon. Gross. Oh, anyways, keep going. But um. Have you ever done the tea? Have you ever done the tea? The sweet tea? Yeah. Have, have you ever, ever made the sweet tea? Yeah. Just ever... cups? No. Cups of sugar? Yeah, but have you ever walked away from it with it without the cap on? No. Oh, that's like a classic, like, I've, waitress. No, I've never like, done like, that. Like, you just, like, you forget to put, screw the little cap, like, the little por- the little pour oh, spout in. No. You start brewing it, you walk away, and then you got it up to, you got oh, no. tea up to your ankles. Look, I'm really type A, so I made sure that <laughs> sweet tea was made to perfection every time. <laughs> but, yeah, so... Bullseye is like the, like, it's just that standard, like, run of the mill. So I'm going to try yeah. and make a McRib for her myself. Oh, that's just so to, sweet of you. See if I can do it. That's so but sweet. But we love to cook. We're, we're, you know, I'm always trying to, I'm always making sure he's in, he's eating something that I had that. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. I wish cooking was something that I had been, like, I'd grown up with. Well, we were, you were talking, we were talking yeah. about. Things that may happen in the future with us and and your and your stand up comedy show, um, we are what we want to kind of do and start is what we would call the Texas the the talent tailgate, oh. you know, and it would basically be like us taking care of you the way we take care of people in here. I love you know that. what I mean? That's so nice. Yeah, so that's what we would love to like, you know, to get more into as the years as like the time progresses, so that we can get court more people over here but also take care of the people who got us there you know Mm -hmm. and so you're you have a you actually have a show coming up i do you oh and i don't know if you still stayed in contact with denise but denise and that's how we got to to uh, talking and i was saying that i would love to have it during the uh pride rally here in taylor or the pride events here in taylor oh yes i do remember talking about this yeah 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 that's that would be great. I would love I that. I think that would be so much fun. But yep. you uh, you do. It's uh, Austin Tex Ass. It's called Tex Ass. Okay, sorry. Yeah, Tex the show ass. is just called Tex, Tex Ass. ass. Yeah. All right. See, it took me a little while, but it, I it's remember It's all good. Yeah. Tex Ass, right? Yeah. And it's, a, it's a basically like a promotes LGBTQ plus com- comedians yes. around, mm-hmm. around uh, the local just area. the local area. Yeah. yeah. We've had comedians from Houston on it. Like, I, I want to open it up to... I, I'm yeah. not telling you who you need to get, but you need to get the uh, the Faye Baker that bakes stuff from all different era. I'm, he's hilarious. I'm down. No, seriously, we're always looking for like talent. I don't know where he's at, but you gotta watch him. The only okay. thing that uh, makes me a little bit annoyed with him is the way he says eggies. Eggies. Yeah, but other than that, he's pretty chill. Like he'll he'll make like <laughs> that's such a specific that thing. Guy lives in your head rent free over eggies. Yeah, he does. It's pretty Eggies. awful. Not as much as as much as, and then I don't know. We got I, I don't know when we got to cut it off, but I don't want to, huh? Okay. okay. As much as Jeff Dunham does, and I want him to to cease to exist in the worst way possible. Oh, okay. Good to know. 
oh, I can't stand Jeff Dunham. Really? And I'm, like, in a big minority and, like, growing up in, like, Granger and Taylor. Because mm-hmm. it's all Because that's, like, a big... Yeah. Big... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just big personality. Yeah. That people like. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so I... Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. Listen. I don't like anyone. I'm just <laughs> Except kidding. for Taylor Swift. Except for Taylor Swift. <laughs> Except for Taylor Swift. You're a Swifty. I am a Swifty. And, we were, and you were talking about categories of Taylor Swift. Her eras, if eras, you will. Yeah, eras, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. eras of Taylor Swift. I got introduced to Taylor Swift from Bobby Bones. Bobby Bones? Yeah. Bobby Bones and the Bobby Bones Show. And um, he had his uh, producer, Carlos and Elena. And I won tickets to Lady Gaga from him. I Amazing. won tickets to... Another great artist. Uh yeah, I won tickets to Gym Class Heroes. I won tickets to Amazing. something else. I can't remember. I don't know. It sounds like you've got a good track record from Bobby. Well, Bobby what? Again? Bobby Bones. Bobby Bones. I actually came in and I was sat in Bobby on the Bobby Burns, and yeah. I knew that that was wrong. <laughs> I actually sat in on the studio on um, one day. It was really awesome. That's that's sick, man. Yeah, and now I love he that. now he records out of Nashville for the biggest country music radio station. Dang. And it's just like wait, so which which you said you got tickets. Would you get tickets for Taylor, or you just heard? No, no, Taylor? no. So Taylor Swift was playing the piano at at, K, at at the Kiss FM station in Austin, and then what's her name? Amy. Amy was like, "Hey, there's this like girl out here. Her name's Taylor Swift." And was this like when she was debut? Like, very yeah, early this on. was like very okay. early on, and like when she's she was like, still a country music. Exactly, and yeah. so she's literally playing the piano, and like Amy was like, "This girl's gonna be." like big and that was it and yeah. so now she's obsessed like yeah Amy. i mean ticketmaster broke today for hours i mean she's okay she's no Haley from paramore but all that i don't worry i have paramore tickets too you do yeah i have oh, I thank have... you for inviting me even... oh i'm so sorry <laughs> no just kidding don't like worry, i'm I a total i am total simp for Haley. like he's oh, probably same. he's he's probably sick of me talking about how much of i'm, I'm a no, simp for Haley Haley Williams. Was... Like, like one she, of the first people when I was like, wait, am I a little gay? <laughs> and I was like, I love her. Taylor Swift, if I, if I was a woman, she'd make me gay. I, that's how yeah. much I love that woman. Oh, like, 100%. The fact that she was like, she didn't, you know, it's just like, she, she literally inhabits a whole culture of music that people don't think about. It, you know, it's, from like newfound glory to say anything. You, that is, this is literally like I know I told you that I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan, yeah. but I'm I've been an emo kid my whole life. Yeah, like my whole like newfound glory. I've probably seen newfound glory over ten times. I saw. I get to see Yellow Card live. I just saw Yellow Card this summer. <laughs> it was really good. I but... cried. <laughs> I I am a 36 year old woman and I cried. So it was it whenever what song. Just the whole album. Oh, he the played whole Ocean album. Avenue. They played Ocean Avenue from start to oh, finish, man. and I just there's a place on Ocean, Ocean Avenue. Avenue. Oh. Oh. I love it. It's so. I good. went to go. I went to ACL. I want tickets to that too. Wait, what? Did they play at ACL? They uh, what was it? Uh, what what, to, what band was that? Yellow card. Yellow card didn't play at ACL. Oh, okay. But I won tickets to ACL, right? And it was kind of a coincidence because he was there, but he was working in the back. Because I got to see Kanye West live. Oh, damn. And it was insane. Oh, he's not doing so hot yeah, right that's, now. That's, yeah, it's so funny. Like, I don't know if that's a good flex anymore. <laughs> it was either that or... Yeah, uh, was it? The re- well, that was it. Because uh, Yellow sparked Coldplay. it. Coldplay. Yeah. Coldplay. I like, could cold, do without like, Coldplay. Well, Coldplay's, Coldplay is the... What is it called? Um, it's like... What is that... Uh, Nickel, he's like they're, they're like the nickel back of like the soft, like the soft rock, the soft or rock, yeah. yeah so I can yeah. kind of like, but I, who cares? Like, you know, you know, like, like they had great hits, they're good, they're just like, I mean, there are some songs that I think are very recognizable yeah. and people do enjoy them. And La Vida, Vida, La Vida, yeah. is that the one that they did with, uh, um, I think so, yeah, like the, the chain smokers or whatever? Didn't no. they do a song with the chain smokers? The funny thing about the chain smokers, I call every modern pop boy like the chain smokers. The chain smokers. My sister will get so mad at me because I'll walk in, it'll be like she'll have it on music when we're all together, or well, she'll have it on like one award show that happened like the week before, and I'll be like, Is that the chain smokers? And she's like, They're not all the chain smokers. Ch- once you turn 35, they're all the chain smokers, and they're all, they're all, um, what bad bunny 
If they're brown, they're Bad Bunny. If they're if white, they're, white, they're, they're chain smoker. Smoker. Okay, but I do love Bad Bunny. So I another thing I got introduced to really early on, like that was a friend, like a friend that, and also an associate that worked with my mom was like mm-hmm. obsessed with Bad Bunny, and mm-hmm. we were like, okay. Verano Cinti is gonna is like up for album of the year. So it, he's he's living in the shadows of uh, living La Vida Loca. You can never chase Ricky it. Martin. <laughs> you can never be. You can never Martin. chase it. And at that point. Bad Bunny will never be Ricky Martin. It's true. <sighs> I don't know. I like Ricky Martin. I grew. I. I mean, I'm not. I. I. I, I like Ricky Martin. Okay, I think I dressed up as him for Halloween. Although I will tell you, my very the very first CD I bought ever was Gloria Estefan, and she will forever remain one of my favorite artists of all so time. So you were all about the what is it? The sound system, the Miami the sound machine, machine, or whatever it was. <laughs> How old so are you? Much. I could just see like. Like little like, I think I was like I couldn't have been more than ten. I think I bought Hootie and the Blowfish at ten. Yeah, I was all about the college rock and my. I love that. And my, I love t- that. And my my like Matchbox Twenty. Not me, baby, give me Gloria. I'm still <laughs> I still rock out to Gloria. So, you got a show coming up. Yes, a couple. Couple, actually. yeah. Yes. And the, one of them, well, I want to talk about them. You know. But one of them we were talking about, and the reason why I liked it so much is because it's just, it's like stories that are personal, sometimes funny, mm-hmm. sometimes you know, can get the tears rolling. I loved the uh, is it the moth stories on oh, PBS? Moth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted to bring to Taylor, and just so happens that they're actually doing one. They did one I think last week. And oh, that's so, amazing! Yeah, so you should definitely because I know you know the Black Sparrow. You should definitely talk to them about y'all guys doing that because they that. just started it. And I still remember one story about a girl's like coming to terms with no Santa Claus, and it just like stuck with me. I, and that was I actually have my own story about coming to terms with no Santa oh, Claus. Oh no! Yeah, that's yeah. Cr- Maybe it was you. Were you ever on a Peter no, Kale? Are you? I wish, but because I think I have a good story. Yeah. But I'm curious to hear this other person. Well, so like I think she ended up finding out that like. I think like that her father was the one that was like bringing the presents, but it was just like a realization that she came over time. Mm -hmm. And then it was just like, at this point, like he's like, he's trying to convince her that it's real. And she's basically telling her, you don't have to keep doing this for me, you know? And then the sister, like helping the dad to try and keep the tradition alive, which was really cute. Oh, no, see, that's, like, a beautiful story. Mine is, like, very devastating and how my entire... Someone just pulled the Band-Aid off? Yeah, so, like, I'll just summarize it in a couple of... You know, obviously, I have, like, a whole story, but I'll summarize it in a couple of lines. We had gone on, like, a family vacation for Christmas, and I have one younger brother, so he's about a little less than two years younger than me. Okay. But I guess he had found out Santa wasn't real before I had. Oh, no. So, so you... anyways, so we were all on this family vacation, and I kept being like, we have to get home because Santa's coming. Oh, no. I can't miss He's smoking Santa. a cigarette. <laughs> the My, tear like, coming six-year-old down. six-year-old brother, or I don't know how old it was, five. God, I don't even know how old it was. It must have been like He's seven. dragging seven, on a cigarette. Seven. Anyways, he's so young. He had to have been like no more than five. He's got a five o'clock yeah, exactly shadow. Yeah, exactly, five o'clock shadow, and he's just like, mm. Yeah. I know the real world. I know the real world, Sarah. You don't know anything. And then my whole family basically sat me down because they wanted to stay longer. Oh, they wanted to extend no. the trip by a couple yeah, days. Yeah. And they were like, Sarah, Santa's not real. They could have told so, you something. And so-, and so we're staying on this <laughs> vacation. This is when you come into it and you'd be like, listen, we sent, we sent Santa... We send letter. him a note. He knows you're here. Yeah. The presents will be there when you get back. Exactly. No, they straight up were just like, he's and then not like, real. And we're sure, staying here. And make sure she leaves some milk and cookies out for me so that I know she got the letter. That's it. But now they done broke your heart. They done broke my heart. And my brother was like, how did you not know? And I was like, you're five. Like, <laughs> he's just swirling scotch. Yeah, exactly. Mm, my whole family is like smoking cigars. <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Yeah. You got two more shows. Let's hear about those before you come. Yeah. So I have a couple coming up. Um, I've got a show in New Braunfels tomorrow awesome. with Ozzy. Yeah. Um, and then the two shows that I run, Campfire Comedy is my storytelling show. That is on Thursday right. at the Buzz Mill at 8 p.m. And then my LGBTQ show, Texas, is out on the 29th at the Creek in the Cave at 9 p.m. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much. I'd love to see I think that, um, folks there. I Ryan Long was going to be in the Creek in the Cave, which was, he's like, yeah. He's pretty cool. Yeah, love it. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate it. This was S-U-Y-L. Thank you for coming out, Sarah. Thanks.
Shut up, you listen to my monkey mouth. As a companion, when you got pun on the canoe route, popped in a portal and got in a fight. Elias knocked him out. Bow, Marco fighting style. Bow, you will see he tapped out. Bow, we win, we get crowned. Monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth.